One of the key features of GORM is its ability to define associations between database tables. We can create relationships like one-to-one, -one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. -many. In this episode, we will cover one-to-one -one and one-to-many relationships. To understand how the associations work in GORM, let us look at this example. This program defines three structures, user, note, and credit card. These structures represent tables in the database. The user structure has a one-to-many relationship with the note structure and a one-to-one -one relationship with the credit card structure. What does that mean? This means a user can have multiple notes while can have only one credit card. These relationships are defined by the user ID fields in these two structures. Let's run through the code. Here we did the DB query and got the first note in the note object. Now, to get the user to which this note belongs, we need to do another DB query on the users table where ID is equal to note.userID. This will fetch us the user to which the note belongs. Similarly, if we want to retrieve all notes that belong to a user, we can query the notes table on the user ID column. Retrieval of the credit card is no different. To get the credit card of the user, we need to query the credit cards table on user ID. Now let us run the program. Here we can see the notes table is queried to get the first note. And then the users table is queried to get the user to which this note belongs. This query retrieves all notes of the user, and all notes are printed here. In the end, we query the user's credit card, and here it gets printed. Now we will make changes to the code to use GORM associations. A user can have multiple notes, so we will define a new variable in the user structure, notes of the type note list. In our app, a user can have only one credit card. So let's define credit card of the type credit card here. Similarly, a note belongs to a user. So here we define a user variable of type user. Now let us use these associations to fetch results from the DB. Let's go to the main function where we are doing the queries. So here we are getting the first note, and then trying to get the user to whom this note belongs. We can simplify this code by using associations. Associations can be used with function preload, so in this query we can simply add preload function and put user as a parameter, and then chain the rest of the query. What happens here is, the preload function eager loads the user associated with the note. We will be able to understand it better when we look at the SQL queries it executes in the background. As the user is eagerly loaded, we don't have to fetch the user using this query here. We can remove this code and, here we can simply say note.user.username. Oh. We have an error here. The user variable is not defined. We will define it here. Now let's run the code. Let's have a look at the SQL queries preload has executed. These are the two queries executed by the preload statement. Here it tries to get the first note. And since the note belongs to the user with ID 1, it fetches the user in this query. Don't get confused by the order of these statements in the logs.
The note query is executed first and then the user query. So with one statement of code, we are able to execute two SQL queries and fetch the user along with the note. And here the username gets printed. In a similar fashion, we can fetch notes and the credit card along with the user using GORM associations. Let's make this whole code super easy using associations. Suppose we need to query the user's table by username. We will write a query like this. Now to fetch notes and the credit card of the user, we can use preload function like this. We can chain two preload functions, one for the notes and the other one for the credit card. Now we don't have to do another query to get the notes. We can simply use user.notes to get user's notes. And for the credit card as well, we can remove this query and use the association. Replace cc with user.creditcard. Let's run the code. So here we can see the three queries GORM has run on the database. Though this query appears in the last, it was the first one to run. This gets the user record. From here, the user ID is used to run these two queries to get notes and the credit card. And here are the prints. Notes and the credit card are printed here. The way we got the credit card from the user object, similarly we can fetch the user if we have the credit card. To do that, let's add a variable user here. This throws an error cyclic declaration. This can be solved by making this variable a pointer. Today we learned how to handle one-to-many associations with GORM. Thank you for watching and happy coding.